Well, joining me now is Hora Hora School Principal Pat Newman, who has been in the profession for more than 50 years. OK, Pat, the government has a plan, uh, better attendance data, a traffic light system and fines. It is a pretty administrative approach. How's it going down on the front line? I, I would, don't know how you could call it the plan. To be quite honest, from the days when I was in rural education and in country schools, this thing's about as much use as tits on a ball. It's not going to do anything. And it shows that this guy who thinks he knows everything knows bugger all nothing. You know, when you look at it, what is he asking to do? He's saying, look, we will um, publicise the results, the attendance results. Who's going to read them? Do you think people are actually that avidly going to read them? And the ones we're trying to target don't actually read newspapers or go into the school websites or anywhere else. He talks about a communications plan. Great. But if they follow the bureaucratic style that they had the last time, it's no use. He talks about going and getting the public health um, to redefine when a child is ill. Does that mean we're going to have classrooms full of kids with gooby noses? You know, we know if children have a cold, they infect other children, and we know they infect, infect other teachers. I mean, it's, it's crazy. He's blaming the boards and principals and schools for the problem that we have, yet he's the one that says, listen, we're going to cut lunches. Now, how the hell is that going to get people into school? He says, we're going to cut back the transport subsidies. How the hell is that going to get people into schools? He's been listening to all the women with their teacups and the um, at, uh, afternoon tea parties, and someone's told him, now do this. Look, he talks about minimising disruption to kids. Do you know the biggest disruption to kids over my 51 years and being a principal since 81, has been that every two to three years, we have a new political master who thinks they know it all, who comes in and changes everything we've been trying to bed down. And then another two to three late years later, we get another one, and another one, and another one. And they wonder why the kids aren't there. They wonder why no one wants to go into teaching. They wonder why our kids are failing. It is not the schools. It is not the teachers. It's the bloody politicians who will not sit down and work out a plan with the sector so that we have a direction for 10 or 20 years. And as said, every two to three years, we get a change. This guy's got these brainstorm ideas of how to fix it without spending any money. And yes, I am angry because I see the effects on our kids. I see the effects on my profession. I see the effects where principals and teachers have been tossed onto the rubbish heap because we haven't had the resources to deal with all the problems we have. He talks about, I, I, I nearly cracked up. He says, and I'll quote if you don't mind me reading it, he said, the education crisis today will turn into a crime crisis, a vulnerable children crisis, an economic crisis, and an inequality crisis tomorrow. We are addressing this by creating a culture where children know if they want to lead, uh, to uh, get on, they need to go to school. What planets are gone? That's not in the future. That's what we're dealing with now. That's what we need the help for, not tinkering around with systems and ideas that he thinks he can impose and, and, and it will all work and we'll all jump up and down and say, oh, yes, Minister. Oh, yes, oh, knowing Minister. Well, I could use a couple of words, but it would be very unprofessional. OK, Pat, well, what I'm hearing is that it is not resonating right now for you out there on the front lines, but there is uh, plenty more work to come on this, and thank you so much for joining us here on Lates.